Now, let me just kind of bring you up into another perspective that we're, um, is, is, where is Nick? Well, Nick's over there. Okay, I just want to make sure we have our next speaker here. We are um, kind of trying to take a look at what is America? What makes it great? What are the ideas that we have to embrace and start talking about, start thinking about, start using to push back on the loss of what we're going to face if we don't? Uh, Nick Adams comes to us from Australia and he has a perspective. He's also a millennial, so you get a two for one in this one. You get the foreigners as well as the young people taking a look at what is America and why are we so great and why we got to fight. Please join me in welcoming Nick Adams. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests of the Educational Policy Conference of 2016. It is truly wonderful to be here with you in St. Louis. Let me first begin by expressing my profound gratitude to the delightful Donna Hearn, a lady that I've only known for less than 48 hours, but already definitively determined that in this new age of entitlement, should it ever become acceptable to have three grandmothers, there will be no contest. Welcome to the family. I'd also like to thank the Constitutional Coalition for inviting me here to be a part of this magnificent and vital program. It may be cold outside, but we are burning for America here inside. As I cast my eye around and across this room, I'm thrilled to be in the company of men and women who believe in America as much as I do, who believe in her idea, her story, her potential and her leadership. I'm honoured to be in a room ablaze with the red hot flames of patriotism that have always fired up this country and warmed the entire world. I'm privileged to be in such close proximity to so many who embody the American exceptionalism I identified early. And it is simply a more than incredible moment to be in the land that is home to the world's greatest fighting force. Can I ask any active duty military or veterans to please stand up so that we can thank you for your service? We're free because you're brave. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my 17th visit to the United States but my very first time, my inaugural visit to the Show Me State. But even more significantly, this is a personal milestone for me, this particular speaking engagement. This marks the 25th state that I have visited and spoken in, which puts me exactly at halfway. Of course, I do know that there are not 57 states in the United States of America, but I guess that is what an education free of common core arithmetic <laughs> and an old school disciplinarian high school mathematics teacher as a father will bring. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, America is special because it is not just a country, not just a geographical entity not merely a collection of states. It is an idea, it is the best idea this world has ever had. And it is why in 5,000 years of recorded human history, we have never seen a nation like America. And unlike almost everything else I can think of, with perhaps the exception of burgers and ribs and steaks and as of yesterday, St. Louis style pizza, 
my enthusiasm and passion for America never wanes or dissipates or shrinks. In fact, it intensifies with each visit and every state that I go to. America is a special place and America is complex, but American exceptionalism is remarkably simple. It's individualism over collectivism, patriotism over relativism, limited government, not nanny state, faith, not secularism, life, not death, equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. Through these values, America has unleashed the individual genius of man and provided hope even in hopelessness. But sustaining optimism in this winter of anxiety and fear is not easy. America has seldom been weaker, nor the world more dangerous. There is a poisonous, degenerate and godless assault on American values, supported by teachers, politicians, judges and public servants. There is a relentless agenda of politically correct hostility against every good and noble value wrought by the forge of your founders and ancestors. This agenda's fingerprints can be found across America, but its footprints stretch across the world. Political correctness has many targets. Christians, masculine men, heterosexuals, traditional values. But there is no greater target than America. If the politically correct had a deck of cards of the most wanted, America would be its ace of spades. There is no clearer evidence of this than the myriad of politicians, entertainers, artists, teachers and journalists who deliberately and recklessly make America seem hateful to our young. It is shameful, it is treasonous, and it must end now. The schools and universities of America have become left-wing seminaries. For the left have always understood far better than us that in order to be able to control tomorrow, you must control the children of today. The students of today are the inventors, entrepreneurs and stewards in the future of this great nation and the world. And it is for this reason that no greater priority, no higher moral imperative exists than to recapture the classrooms and lecture theatres of our children. The red pens of academia and their history edits have pandered to minorities and fostered self-loathing. Rather than instill pride, they have urged guilt. Rather than do the right thing, they've done the wrong thing. And it is high time that it ends. America's foundational principles are not suspect, they're special. I want young Americans to know that only God is perfect, but America is the best thing we have. I want young Americans to know that confidence and initiative goes further in America than anywhere else. I want young Americans to know that the day they were born in the United States of America is the day that they won the lottery of life. I want them to believe in competition. I want them to believe in winning. I want them to aspire to greatness and disdain mediocrity. I want them to be proud of who they are and where they come from. I want them to understand that America is freedom's currency. I want to see an American flag suspended in every classroom, gymnasium, lobby and office of every school. I want to hear the national anthem at the start of every school assembly and at the beginning of every school athletic event. 
These are the things that will enable us to fight back and to win. I want to see constitution classes in every secondary school and a full year of US geography in every elementary school. And if we do these things, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a fighting chance. As we gather here at the beginning of 2016, America will this year mark her 240th birthday. But it is also time for sober and sombre reflection. For as any historian will tell you, the lifespan of great nations tends to be between 200 and 250 years. That, my friends, I reluctantly and grimly must tell you, puts us, puts America right in the kill zone unless we act. For America to reach her third centennial, a feat few great nations achieve, Americans of all colours, creeds and ages will have to answer the call. They will need an unrelenting, unfaltering and unwavering passion for the enemies of America are no longer simply foreign. They are also domestic. Yeah. Let me be clear. We did not seek nor did we provoke this war on America. We did not expect nor did we invite this unforgivable assault on American values and identity. But we will neither run nor hide. We will neither be a punching bag nor an easy beat. We will turn up, we will win, we will fight, and we will restore America. We will retake America, we will crush political correctness. We will blaspheme against the new elite and their green gay gospel. We will smash their diktats and we will remind them that they don't rule America. We, the people, do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, America means so much to the world. It is the indispensable idea it is the indispensable nation. A world without America is one that we do not want to even contemplate for a fleeting moment. Everyone has an investment in America, no matter who they are, where they live or what they do. America is freedom and we must fight with every bit of passion and energy and love and devotion because family, faith, flag and neighbourhood is at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you and may God continue to bless the United States of America.